Hello, everyone. My name is Owen Gadamer. I'm the community manager at TechWell. I'm joined today by Tom Steen, the CTO at Coveros. Tom, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for having me. So Tom and I, we're going to talk about a security acronym. Basically, this concept came about because I think Tom and I were talking about this months ago and, and someone had started throwing IAST and RASP and SAS and DAST at me and I didn't know what those meant. So I was like, let's sit down. Let's do a basic explanation as to what these mean, how they can be used to help make your application more secure and how we can get started. Um, so what is RASP? So RASP is a runtime application self-protection and it uses uh, um, the same technology as IAST. So it's, it's agent based. So it's software that watches your software run and tries to uh, determine if something's attacking it. Um, the thing that RASP has over IAST, so the goal of IAST is to tell you, we think someone's attacking it by this behavior. What RASP can do is say, on top of that, I think someone's attacking it and I'm going to do something about it. So it could be terminating a session saying that I, I think that this session is attacking the software, so we're gonna terminate it. It could be terminating that session and then saying the user who initiated that session is no longer allowed to log in. So terminating the user, it could be banning the IP address that they're from. So it allows you the ability to not only determine if someone is attacking you, but react to that and uh, prevent them from continuing that attack. Now, you know, so in, in talking to some of the people who have both IASP and, and RASP solutions, um, they may tell you that they can do the exact same level of protection and monitoring. Some of them will tell you that, you know, RASP can be heavyweight, so you have to tune RASP uh, and to look for, you know, the things that are most detrimental to your software. So that, that's going to vary somewhat what you have to do by vendor and the choice of software you use and your underlying technology platform. Um, but what RASP does is it gives you, a, you know, if you have legacy software that hasn't had much application security practices applied to it, it gives you something that's proactive in your production environment that will start at least um, giving you some protection against people attacking you. So the, you know, the upside of RASP is that, you know, if you have a 10 year old legacy application, we have much faster servers than we did 10 years ago. So some of that extra time can be used with your RASP software, evaluating what's going on and, and the requests that are being made of your software and deciding if it should do something about it because it thinks it's being attacked. When you have these IAS, RAS, DAS, SAS, mm -hmm. does it make sense? You say so in a legacy code base where there's not been a lot of security, maybe it makes sense to start with RASP. Are, is there one that you would like if you just had to recommend a blanket like start with this? Yeah, so I would I would look at um, where you are in your life cycle. Um, so if if you, if it's a brand new greenfield project where you're going to start applying application security practices day one, um, you definitely want to start putting SAS static analysis in and reacting to that. As you're building out your test automation, you wanna start putting DAST in and reacting to that. And then as you're you, you know, also probably putting IAST in and using that to help you tune what you really pay attention to. Um, and then when you actually put that software in production using RAFs to help monitor it and help you with your security posture. If you're talking about a legacy system, um, starting with IASP or RASP makes a, a lot of sense now because we have good IASP and RASP systems out there. And starting with static analysis or, or dynamic analysis now means that you're, you're going to overwhelm your developers um, with the, the lines and lines of, of findings, many of which are false positives. So if if you decide you want to pay attention to application security now and you want to get the most out of the efforts you can apply to your legacy systems, I would seriously consider IASP and RASP as the first step. Cool. Can you work back? So the, when you laid out like a new greenfield uh, software, you're talking about starting with DAST or SAST, DAST, IASP, and then RASP. Right. 
legacy, you're going backwards, right? RASP, IS. Could you eventually start putting SAST and DAST into those legacy applications or does it not make sense? No, you could and pe people often do. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, what you start with is going to depend on where you're at now mm -hmm. and uh, how much value you're going to get out of any of those tools. Um, one of the, I mean, there are some good open source. So a lot of the DAST open source tools are, are fairly good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the SAS tools, there, there aren't a lot of comparable, the, the open source isn't um, completely apples to apples comparable to the commercial tools. The open source tools will do a lot of things like um, finding uh, security violation patterns, finding specific things in your code base that, that are vulnerable. They don't do things like workflow and data flow analysis. So they don't look at how the data flows through the, the code and it won't do like what's called taint analysis where you introduce data from the outside world um, but you never sanitize it or you never make sure that it's valid and reject it if it's not. And so that tainted data goes all the way through your application and could go into your database, um, could be used somehow. So, and those aren't things that the, the uh, open source tools are necessarily good at. Those are things that a lot of the commercial tools, at least right now, um, do a little better. Um, right now, there, there are a few open source IAST and RAFS tools, but not a lot. And so you're still looking at getting commercial tools there probably for the most part. 10 years from now, it'll be a different story. <laughs>